Sarah Fletcher, and I am the Executive Director of the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. I'm delighted to welcome you here tonight on behalf of the Board of Directors, the staff, and the wonderful committee of volunteers who put this event together. And they did a great job. The Middlesex Savings Bank is also a continuing Chamber co-branded sponsor. Thank you, Patty Chisholm, and everyone from Middlesex Savings Bank for your commitment to the Chamber. And the committee did a great job soliciting sponsors for tonight. We've had a lot of wonderful sponsors, including the Littleton Electric Light and Water Department, Kimball's Farms, Smudge Graphics, The Home Center Magazine, Cambridge Savings Bank, Acton Pharmacy, Gould's Clothing, Acton Medical, Shire, Caden, and Epstein, Emerson Dental, Regency Park Office Group, Star Custom Framers, AAA Southern New England, Westford Center for Counseling and Holistic Therapies, All About the Massage, Hearts Corporation, and Workers Credit Union. Thank you all so much for supporting tonight's event. It really does make a difference for what we can present for the whole community. Thank you. Now you should be enjoying your salad. After our presentations of the awards, I will serve the entree, and we have a little silent, uh, a live actually, not silent, but live auction tonight. So that'll be some entertainment a little later. Uh, but right now, I just want to take a special moment to um, recognize Karen Donahue. Is Karen in the room? Karen, come on up. Honey. I can get through this without getting emotional here. But uh, listen, Karen is an invaluable asset to the chamber. She is grace under pressure. I can't thank her enough for taking the extra hours at the chamber and for her dedication and commitment to the organization. But um, we just have a little something for you. We're very lucky to have Karen Donahue. Tonight is an important event for the Chamber of Commerce. Through our awards program, we recognize those people and businesses who through their efforts have helped to strengthen our communities and improve the quality of life for all. Tonight we honor individuals for their longtime community service with an etched glass plaque from the chamber, as well as citations from the mass senators and representatives who cover their districts. I'd like to recognize, oh, Kate Hogan had to leave, but she was here earlier, so we won't recognize her right now. But um, it was uh, nice to see her pop in so we can get some pictures. But I would like to um, just say that as I've been the chamber director for seven years now, and that what I have come to know is that the more you do in the community, the more you do in your clubs and associations, the more you do in the chamber, the more successful you are overall. People know you, they know your work, they know your business, they know your contributions, and they want to be partnered with people like that, that kind of success and leadership. You'll hear their names often around the community, in Rotary, in the schools, and in the chamber, and at, and at events such as these. They continue to contribute, not just as a business model, but because of who they are as people. So let me give you an example of what I mean by this, by introducing Mark Shire to present our first award. Mark Shire is a partner in the law firm of Shire, Caden, and Epstein. Mark is a former board member and past president of the chamber. Currently, he's serving as the chairman of Access Sport America organization. He's also serving on the board at Indian Hill Music. And in his spare time, he is the chairman of the School Business Partnership Committee. Please welcome Mark Shire to present the School Business Partnership Committee. Oh my goodness, thank you. Uh, it's, really, it's really a thrill, number one, to see so many people, because uh, I remember back in the early and mid 90s, when we as a group were really struggling to see if we could remain viable. And to see so many people here, and the, the work that Sarah has done uh, is just incredible. So I would like to give her a round of applause. Uh, 
the School Business Partnership Award uh, this year uh, is going to Bay State Elder Law. And you'll see Phil Summers' picture right here. But really, we all know that the brains behind the outfit is his wife, Kathy. Uh, to get, to get, it's really a thrill for me to, uh, to uh, give this award to, uh, to such good friends and colleagues. Uh, they have a terrific law firm. They do a fantastic job. And they've been involved in the school business uh, process in just about every aspect of what we do. Uh, we do uh, internships school, uh, career speakers, uh, all kinds of uh, interviews for the uh, academic decathlon team for senior seminar, and uh, Phil and Kathy have been involved in every single aspect of what we do, including job shadowing, where they have uh, students from uh, Acton Boxborough come to their law firm uh, and, uh, and really work with them. And they've been extremely active, and uh, they're very active in other aspects uh, of the community also. One thing in particular that Phil uh, has started is the mock trial team uh, at Acton Boxborough. Uh, anyone who's gone to law school knows what mock trial is. It's the most terrifying moment of your experience in law school where you are given an argument, you're given a situation, and you're told that you have to argue one side of that argument. And it may be, you may look at that argument and say, I don't agree with this. This is ridiculous. But you have to find a way to do your research and to stand in front of judges who will question you and really defend your position. And uh, that gives people a tremendous amount of confidence and Phil has been instrumental in working with the mock trial team at Acton Boxborough. So uh, I would like Phil and Kathy to come up for just a minute and talk, and uh, congratulations on the School Business Partnership Award this year. I'm so humbled uh, to get an award like this, considering uh, all the people who volunteer in this community. And I want to thank Mark and the School Business Partnership. I mean, they really have developed a terrific program to allow our, our sons and daughters to really get a, a little bit of visibility as to what they want to do in life. And it's an incredible program. I only wish I had uh, learned of this program, or I, if I had it in my high school, I probably would have gone into the law. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have that. So, but thank you again, and thank you to everyone in this. Uh, uh, in room who volunteer their time and uh, uh, thank you again. Just like to take one minute uh, next uh, uh, next week in February, first week of February, nineteen ninety three. We started the School Business Partnership Committee, so uh, we're celebrating our 20th year. And uh, what we tried to do is really to uh, promote school to career initiatives. And we've done this through uh, internships, through job shadowing, through career speaker programs. And we've actually done uh, a number of faculty externships where faculty members at Acton Boxborough actually went out to uh, some of the local businesses and took a year off and worked at the local businesses and then came back to Acton Boxborough. Uh, it's been a tremendously uh, wonderful experience for all of us. There are some of us who have been here right from the beginning. Uh, I know that Tom Wachtel is here. And if everyone from the School Business Partnership Committee could please stand up and and uh, just be recognized. I would like Denise, Denise Hartz, to stand up. I know that Eric is not here, but Denise is here, and Eric has been, uh, he's been a previous recipient of this award, and uh, we, we just call Hartz the, the Disneyland of, uh, of, uh, of acting, because so many kids have been through Hartz and, uh, and been through tours there and actually have worked there. 
So this is our 20th anniversary, and uh, thank you for everything you do, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark, and congratulations to the School Business Partnership Committee. The Chamber Member of the Year is a, a Chamber Member who has unselfishly contributed time, effort, resources, and expertise to the Chamber for the benefit of its members and the organization as a whole. This award feels very personal to me because oftentimes I'm the only one who sees the full extent of the commitment made by the individual. Jules Lavoie has personally helped the Chamber, the members, the staff, and, and the events by sharing his resources with a pay-it-forward mentality. Throughout the year, he took time to come to the office to solicit memberships and sponsorships. He's hosted numerous meetings and events over the year and has been a staunch supporter of the Chamber. We're all very blessed to have him as an active member in this Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome Jules Lavoie, Chamber Member of the Year. Club, and all I have to say is, what she told me once talking about her children, <clears throat> I was saying, you have dynamic kids, what gives? She said, you know, Jules, you get what you put in. So I thank the chamber for giving, you know, what I put into the chamber, I get tenfold. And I'm still going to be with the chamber because the Westford Regency Inn is proud to present Sarah Fletcher, our dues. After not being a chamber member for the last 28 years, there's a change happening at the Westwood Regency Inn. Go in. Welcome to our newest member, the Westwood Regency. Thank you, Joel. tonight is Lester Gould. Lester is also a former member of our board of directors and a past president as well. He works in the family business, Gould's Clothing, and has participated in creating this event tonight. Please welcome Lester Gould to present our retail awards, stars of the area, retail and restaurants, our SOAR awards. Thank you, Lester. Thank you, Sarah. Stars of Area Retailers and Restaurants were modeled after the Mass Retailers Association Awards of Excellence, Excellence and are given in categories where there is a distinction desired for recognition between a retail business and a service business. SOAR, Best new, new Retailer, is a business that is between six months and two years old and demonstrates outstanding success and achievement in the development of their new business. In the fall of 2011, Paul McMahon launched a chocolate company including new product line creation and introduction, opening of traditional retail location, creation of e-commerce site, and development of wholesale and corporate gift programs. Paul McMahon comes from a marketing background and it is evident when you walk into stores around town and see, see their signature candy, the cubes, on the counters for sale. He is quick to collaborate, get involved, and build community. Customers can enjoy high quality confections and ice cream when they visit the store. It is my honor uh, to please welcome the candy man, Paul McMahon, to Happy Chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, kind of ironic, but 
they call the candy man for about 25 years. How about that? Uh, I've been called the candy man for about 25 years, but I, I'm really honored to receive this award on behalf of all the people who work at the Happy Chocolate here, because they're the ones who've done all the hard work, which have made this a great experience, and just along for the ride. And I would also like to thank all the members of the local business community who've been so supportive in the past year. Thank you. Members of the public are invited to nominate their favorite independent dining establishments in the local area and are awarded based on great food, customer service, dining experience, and commitment to the community. In her nomination, Cheryl McPhee writes, Julie makes customers feel at home, like family, in her restaurant. She promotes community and is very generous to many charities. She started with the lunch counter, Kelly's Corner Kitchen, and has continued to grow to her present location and identity as Julie's Place, and now is expanding her service to include breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Please welcome Julie Saganich and Julie's Place as Restaurant of the Year. Welcome Wendy Baker, Vice President, Branch Relationship Manager of the Acton Branch of Enterprise Bank to introduce our nonprofit awards. Good evening everyone. Yes, I am Wendy Baker with Enterprise Bank and yes, we are the proud sponsor of the Chamber's Nonprofit for Profit Connection. It's such a privilege to be able to do that. It is also a privilege tonight to be able to present these two awards. First award for outstanding leadership. This is for an individual who is serving on a nonprofit board of directors and who has made a positive impact on that organization. The constituency and community demonstrates exceptional leadership, governance, and commitment to excellence. This award is, going to, is uh, being presented to Lucy, Lucy Rossborough of Gaining Ground. And let me just mention a few things about Gaining Ground. Gaining Ground was founded in 1994 as a small garden with a mission to produce organic food for hunger relief. Lucy Rossborough joined the organization in 1996 as a volunteer and a board member. For many years, she has been responsible for the Food to Families program. And today, Gaining Ground distributes nearly 30,000 pounds of fresh produce annually. Lucy really deserves this outstanding leadership award. Please come forward, Lucy Rossborough. Well, like all nonprofits, this is a team. And I don't mean to fall back on Tom Brady, but it's a team award, it really is. It's always the team. Um, from the founder, Jamie Bemis, who is a Concordian, uh, to the farmers who have worked very, very hard, to the volunteers, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers and ours over these many years. 
and our boards from the past and the 16 of us present who are here tonight. And finally, the most important people of all are our recipients. Um, Gaining Ground grows everything with volunteers and we give everything away. We don't sell a thing and we're very proud of that. Um, it is deeply satisfying to all of us and so we are very honored to be honored tonight and we thank you all for having us here. And thank you. Nonprofit of the Year Award. And this award goes to an organization who has been operating in one or more of our one or more of our communities for at least five years and has consistently contributed to the betterment of those communities. In 2007, Andy Rashad read an article about a baseball program for special needs children in Pennsylvania. It got him thinking that his son Henry, with special needs, might enjoy playing in such a league. Andy, Andy and Lauren teamed up with the Shirt and Leaves of uh, friends of theirs of Boston, who had been working to form a Miracle League in Boston. They moved the program to Boxborough, where Andy and Lauren could pool their resources and get connections to start this new Miracle League. Since the league began in 2008, it has served more than 245 children with disabilities involving uh, nearly 400 volunteers and 67 different towns in eastern and central Massachusetts are involved. In September 2012, they were very successful in removing barriers that keep our young athletes with unique needs from experiencing joys. I remember they moved the field from a location in Boxborough, which was okay, to a phenomenal location at Nanner Park in Acton. And so the kids were experiencing a great new location for their sports. They opened this fully accessible Joseph Lally Miracle Field with a custom designed rubberized surface to allow for safe and easy mobility for all. This is located along the other grass fields at the Nara Park. I hope you've all had a chance to go see it. It is outstanding. Please welcome Lauren and Andy Richard and Miracle League as Massachusetts of Massachusetts as the nonprofit of the year. as small as 35 cents up to $100,000. Everybody was involved in this. It's just been amazing. And I would encourage you all to come out this spring. We start April 27th. Come out to Nara Park on Saturday and watch the kids play baseball. And we're honored to be here. Thank you for having us. demonstrated loyalty, dedication, commitment to the area, and have dedicated their free time to making significant contributions to the welfare of the community. The recipients need not be a business, business people. Our first community service award tonight uh, it was going to a gentleman who is not able to make it, um, to Peter Hilton of Open Table, but I'd like to invite uh, Susan Evans and Salma uh, Semakula to say a few words about Open Table. Selma, are you here tonight? Selma, make it? Nope, oh, they're there. Hi. Um, well, the, the okay, it's an honor. 
importantly, to be here tonight to discuss this award for Peter. Open Table serves over 250 meals a week um, in both Concord and Maynard. And we also provide groceries for um, about that many as well. Um, Peter has been an inspiration to me. Um, we have over we have uh, over 300 volunteers who work many hours, tire, tireless hours, um, to help to help um, people that aren't as fortunate. Someone wants to say something. Selma nominated Peter for this award. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here tonight with all of you honorable people, happy people. Uh, some time ago, I came to know about Open Table. Open Table, a community organization that helps the unfortunate families, families that cannot, families that do not have enough. Uh, Open Table gives those families weekly hot dinners. They give weekly groceries, and they help especially children, young children who come from those families by giving them care and attention. Open Table helps those people to feel a sense of belonging, to feel loved and to feel respected. And because of all that, you know, it is, it is not Open Table alone, it is the people behind Open Table that do all that. And it's a team of wonderful, committed volunteers. And that, on top of these volunteers is the president, who is Peter Hilton. This gentleman, Peter Hilton, is a president, and unlike other presidents I've seen elsewhere, he is very down to earth. He's a person who welcomes everybody, talks to everybody, cares, listens, never judges. He's a person who will go to Boston to pick the groceries and distribute them. You'll find him in the kitchen, chopping onions and, you know, everything. So I just felt it was really very important and to, to nominate him. And I feel so happy and gratified that Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce really has done this truly fairly and freely to accept our nominations. Thank you so much. Michael Tobia, Chairman of the Mount Calvary Community Supper, to present our next Community Service Award. Welcome, Peter. I mean, uh, excuse me, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. The Community Supper is really a long-time institution in Acton. Acton Box Bar, dating back all the way to 1984. And we feel privileged to be able to reestablish the dinner at Mount Calvary. Since last April, we, we have served 60 to 70 guests every Wednesday. Both Betty and Carol together have prepared over 2,000 meals and with countless volunteer hours. But it's not just the wonderful meal that these two prepare, it's the special interest that they have with our guests by making every meal a warm and welcoming experience. Just last week, one of our guests told them, I come early to enjoy the aroma of the feast. Congratulations to both Betty Andrews and Carol Robbins. Oh, 
of all, we'd like to thank Mike. <clears throat> he does all the donation getting, purchases all the food. <coughs> we love to cook. And just seeing the happy faces that the people give us with their big smiles is well worth it. The kitchen at Mount Calvary is so big and beautiful, it, it's a joy to be able to cook there. Um, thanks to the donation of uh, business people, it, it sure. makes it possible. And I want to thank you all for this honor. Thank you. Rowena Jimenez is um, here to present our award to Carol. So Rowena, you want to come up to, and make your presentation? Please welcome Rowena Jimenez. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce the recipient of this year's Middlesex Chamber of Commerce Award for Community Service. Carol Dombowski has been the longest serving president of the Friends of the Acton Memorial Library. Carol and the Friends run the book sales in Acton, and with the money they raise, they initiate or support the gamut of literacy programs offered to Acton residents, from reading programs for toddlers, to book clubs for adults, to internet access to computer <coughs> literacy classes for senior citizens in town. On top of this, they share some of the funds with all the school libraries in Acton and the other public library in Acton, the West Acton Public Library. Some people may feel that this group may seem inconsequential, but not for those who value reading and books and the role that they play in building our community and society in general. Learning to read and reading well is our civic, uh, civic duty. We the ability to read, citizens are able to first gather vital information and then with effective literacy skills discern which of this information makes sense. Finally, armed with good information and sound reflection, they engage in thoughtful discussions of issues with other informed people. Literacy is the foundation of a sound discourse on any issue we struggle with. And we have Carol and the friends to thank for ensuring that the people in our community will flourish as readers and will grow as citizens exercising their ability to reason and problem solve. Carol and the Friends also strive to promote literacy outside of Acton by donating books to prison inmates in Concord and the clients of the Food Pantry and other nonprofit organizations. Uh, most, note, uh, most noteworthy, helping a nonprofit promoting love of reading among poor children in underserved communities in the Philippines. I met Carol over 10 years ago when I contacted her for, contacted her for books we can ship to our partners in the Philippines to help children there get out of poverty by developing their reading skills and getting scholarships to good schools and colleges. Carol remained to be one of our most generous supporters, giving us hundreds of storybooks year after year after year. And now this organization has helped establish close to 200 mini libraries and reading rooms serving more than 100,000 Filipino children. Thank you, Carol. You are most deserving of this award, and may our good Lord continue to bless all your undertakings. And thank you to the Middlesex West Chambers of Commerce for taking the time to honor the work of people like Carol. More power. three very brief things about community service. I suspect everybody in this audience already knows them. The first is that I really can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit 
to the community <laughs> service. It happens to us all. But over the years and over the decades, and this is the second thing I want to say, is that I learned that community service gives back to us so much more than we put into it. So that leads me to my third point, which is community service, just do it. <laughs> Thank you. Jamie Tom is the branch, man, uh, branch service manager at Active Enterprise Bank. She is the founder of our YP Connect referral group for young professionals, and she was the first recipient of the Rising Star Award. I'd like to introduce Jamie Tom to present our Rising Star Awards tonight. Good evening, everyone. Andrew Carnegie once said, you cannot push anyone up a ladder unless he is willing to climb himself. The saying is true for the two Rising Star Award recipients tonight. These individuals have pushed themselves and have succeeded as young leaders in our community. The Rising Star Award is awarded to an individual business person under the age of 40 who has made or is making significant contributions to the welfare of his or her community through involvement and participation. I am very proud to present tonight's award to two very deserving individuals who I've had the pleasure of interacting with this past year. The first recipient of the Rising Star Award is presented to Melissa Levine, a lifelong Acton resident, serving as a managing partner at Levine and Piero in Maynard. Melissa practices in the area of family law, construction law, and general civil litigation. When Melissa started her practice with her husband, Kyle, she immediately became immersed in the community. She's actively involved in Middlesex West Chamber, recruiting new members with the Ambassadors Group, and sharing her ideas with the YP Connect. I can always use her advice during those meetings. Outside of the Chamber, she serves on the Board of Directors at Lawrence Academy in Groton, and also for an organization called Maydog. I'm proud to present the first Rising Star Award to a very admirable candidate, Melissa Levine. dedicating myself to hard work and diligent effort in everything that I do. 
and I couldn't be more honored tonight. So I'm happy to share this with 195 of my friends, and um, hopefully we'll be here again soon. contributions to the welfare of the community through involvement and participation and who has given freely of her, his or her time to, and energy to the uh, community betterment. Tonight Chris Hill is going to present our award uh, for Business Person of the Year. Chris Hill is the team leader at Keller Williams Realty International Congress. She is currently serving as the president of the Women's Council of Realtors as well as serving on the members Benefit Committee for the Greater Boston Real Estate Board. Please welcome Chris to present the Business Person of the Year. Good evening. I'd love to invite my mother, Edie Hill, and my brother, Tim Hill, up to the podium. I'm so honored to have been given the opportunity to introduce my mother, my mentor, and my business partner, Edie Hill, as Business Person of the Year. Edie is a self-made leader who teaches and encourages others to rise to their full potential. She has a long history of success in the real estate industry, and more importantly, in helping others. This is her short, I promise, story. <laughs> Um, when Edie and my father divorced in 1973, she was left with three children, ages seven, five, and two. I was seven, I was two. <laughs> um, with no one to help and no formal education, Edie had to accept welfare. This was a difficult situation, but with a desire to provide the best for her family, Edie decided on a sales career in real estate. Within six months, she was off of welfare, and making enough for us to survive. Within a few years, she became a top producing sales associate. Obviously, with three children, there were many struggles. Some struggles were handled with grace, and others, well, they were just handled. <laughs> I remember one Easter weekend, she worked so many hours that she didn't have time, the time or energy to fill our baskets. It was 90 degrees that Easter, and so she creatively made up a story that the Easter Bunny had melted. <laughs> and he was not able to fill our baskets. <laughs> she told us in order to make up for the melted Easter Bunny, we were going to go to the beach for the year. And it honestly turned out to be one of the best Easter's I can ever remember. In 1984, Edie opened a real estate company in Acton, E.A. Hill & Company. She grew the office to 20 sales associates and was number two or three in market share on a regular basis. The training she provided sales associates was unique in the industry. She taught associates, primarily women, to think like business owners. She helped them discover what they wanted in life and showed them through her own personal experiences that anything you want is possible. During, the time, during that time, she served on the Greater Boston Real Estate Board of Directors and was active in implementing innovative programs in the real estate industry, including the groundbreaking statewide multiple listing service that we all use now and a more secure electronic lockbox system. In 2001, Edie sold her company and, um, to National Realty Trust and worked as a sales associate for Cobble Banker, returning to sales full time allowed Edie to do what she loves most, work directly with clients, helping them make informed real estate decisions. She quickly became a top producing sales associate once again. In 2007, Edie and several associates, including myself, opened Keller Williams Realty Boston Northwest in Concord. Year to date, with 75 of sales associates, the office is in the top 1% in the state. As the operating principal of the office, Edie works daily with sales associates, helping them discover their passions in life 
and showing them how to create a business, success, business successful enough to fund those passions. Edie has also given countless hours and funds directly to individuals in need. She has helped many women who needed a, that little extra, like heating oil or food for the week, to continue on their journey. One particular lady, um, young lady, she helped comes to mind, a high school girl who was working for her at the time. She was accepted to a very prestigious college and decided that she could not afford to attend. Edie mentored her on finding funding for college and paid for her first semester books. A bit of mentoring and a little donation, and this young lady went to college, graduated, and recently published her first book which, by the way, is becoming a motion picture. <laughs> um, Edie has impacted so, so many lives, including my own, in such a positive way that it is impossible to look at her as anything but a leader. She strives to empower others, and in doing so, allows others to empower themselves. Please join me in presenting Edie Hill with Business Person of the Year Award.
Thank you, Chris, and congratulations, Edie. For our last presentation tonight, I'd like to invite Phil Summers up. He is a partner of Bay State Elder Law, tonight's recipient of the School Business Partnership Award. He's serving as the president of the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. And um, Phil, why don't you come on up for our final award tonight? Evening again. I think I'm the cleanup hitter for this evening, and uh, it's almost like the Academy Awards. You always save the, the biggest prize, the biggest award for the end. So, and tonight is no different. Uh, it's my honor, to, on behalf of the board of directors, uh, the chamber members, and all our volunteers, to make this award tonight. The Lifetime Achievement Awards recognizes individual for career-long achievement, for contributions to the region's quality of life for having a positive impact on future generations, for excellence in business stewardship, as well as for leadership in support of economic progress. This year's recipient truly epitomizes these qualities. It is my pleasure and high honor to award the 2013 Lifetime Achievement Award to Bud Flannery. <laughs> involvement in our community stems back to the 1950s. Let me just list a few things which Bud has done over our, for our community beyond building a few hundred homes in this area. He is one of the founders of the Acton Youth Center, the Town Fair, which has been benefit the Acton Boxboro Student Activity Fund. He's been involved in the Monday Night Quarterback Club and the Acton Looks Good Contest. He has been a Sea Scout leader, recreation commissioner, President of both the Acton and the Foxborough Business and Professional Associations, a founder of the Chamber of Commerce. Rotary International has been a very important association for Bud, who has been a member for over 50 years, and I'm told he hasn't missed one meeting over the 50 years. <laughs> And in Rotary, he has served as president. He has also been a uh, district governor, together with his wife, Joan, and has, has raised seven children. They have 14 grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. Bud is a pillar of the community, leading the way, and is always willing to lend a hand. Service is above self is not only the motto for Rotary, but a motto for Bud, uh, for which he lives by. It's especially true statement that our community will look very different today without him. He's truly a community treasure. Please welcome Bud Flannery to the Lifetime Achievement of Life. It's an honor to have been chosen for this award. Kind of overwhelming. It's uh, been fun doing all of this, it's been, it's been fun, we've been associated with all of the different people throughout the years, helping to create some of these, these things. I couldn't have done it without the help of my wife, Joan, and my seven children. It's been fun, thank you very much. <laughs> Before I give the toast, I just want to first of all thank Sarah and the, uh, the uh, 
your office are doing such a great job. I do not know what we do without Sarah. She is truly a treasure for us. Okay, if I can ask you to raise your glass. And uh, Colonial Spirits of Acton has donated the sparkling Prosecco uh, for our toast and tribute to our award winners. So please raise your glass. We are proud of the individuals, organizations, and businesses we have recognized tonight, and we wish you continued success. May your businesses flourish, organizations grow, and lives you touch be many. Thank you for the good work you have done and continue to do in our communities. You make life better for all of us. God bless. So enjoy your dinners. We're going to be um, hearing from Cooley and Amanda in just a little bit with a live auction. We have five selected items up for a live uh, auction tonight. And um, then we will be bringing up dessert and having a nice time here. We actually, the raffle items, uh, winners are going to be posted in the back. So enjoy your night.